So, welcome to risk and return. This is an, another one of the big concepts in finance that comes in, uh, I would say, after the time value of money, where we're equating values of cash in the future to cash today and vice versa. Risk and return is another basic concept, and they're linked via the finance function. And a lot of the valuation of things that we do, things that we we uh, we evaluate, things that we invest in, are based on our uh, our exchange of risk and return. So I'm going to introduce that concept, and then we're going to go into calculating the return, the variance, and the standard deviation. Let's create a scenario here. If you had we're given an offer of either getting $10 or flipping a coin and having a chance of going double or nothing. In other words, taking home 20 if it lands on heads or nothing if it lands on tails. What would you do? Now, most, well, I don't know what most people would do, to be honest. Some people might go for the gamble. Some people might not go for the gamble. If you're more of the gambling type, then let's take it a step further. Let's multiply those numbers by 1,000. Now what you, what you do? Would you take 10,000? Or would you, again, take the coin, flip the coin, and go for double or nothing? If Let's say you're the bigger gambler than I am. Well, if that's the case, let's take it one more step further. Let's multiply it again by 1,000. What would you do? Would you take 10 million? Or would you be willing to flip a coin to see with, whether you're going to go double or nothing on that? Anyway, you get the idea. The point is, at some point in time, you would probably say no. And that's the basis for game shows like Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? It's basically rather following some human nature. Some of us are more willing and some of us are less willing to bet or to gamble. But at some point in time, we'd go for the lower risk, uh, lower risk guaranteed return. In fact, I'd like to make another point. This whole gamble would probably look a little bit different if you were to be not offered ten dollars on double or nothing but rather um, offered a choice of flipping a coin and either losing ten dollars or winning ten dollars based on how that coin landed so it's worth thinking about that let's take an example where let's let's assume you said no to the second gamble uh, which means you'd be okay to gamble the $10 and go double or nothing, but you would not do it for $10,000. Well, what would happen if I changed the bet and said you could flip the coin twice and you'd only lose the $10,000 if it landed twice on tails, but if it landed once on heads or twice on heads, you would be able to go home with the double or nothing. In other words, three chances out of four you would win and one chance out of four you would lose. Well, it's no longer a fair bet. In other words, the probability of winning now, your expected value, if you were to run this, uh, if you were to, to run this bet uh, a theoretically infinite number of times, but a large number of times, you would be getting on average, you'd be winning fifteen thousand dollars because three times you'd walk home with twenty thousand, and one time you'd walk home with nothing. So taking on the risk of Gambling 10,000 with the probability of winning 15,000 expected value starts looking more attractive. Now, maybe more of you would then take, the, take on this bet. This is the concept that at some point in time, you would be willing to take risk again in exchange for a higher expected value for taking on that risk. That is what we're talking about, risk versus return. So the lesson here is the more risk that you're willing to take uh, you want to be compensated with a higher return. This topic and the way it works in terms of measuring risk and return as it pertains to finance is what we're talking about here. How do we calculate expected return? It's, tech, it's technically speaking the mean, which means it's the total of all returns divided by the number of observations. So it's just the sum of returns over the number of observations. Calculating the variance is the uh, is basically the difference between each of the returns and the mean. We square it and then we divide that by the number of observations. We're taking here the population variance for those who are statistically inclined. 
finance deals with measures uh, and measures of the future and therefore expected returns. So we're so we're I was talking about historical returns in these equations, but we're now looking forward towards expected returns. So since we're looking forward, we're also dealing with probabilities. So the equivalent expressions for the mean, which is the expe the expected return, would be the sum of the actual returns time or the expected returns times the probabilities of those various returns and the standard deviation would be the sum of the probabilities times the difference between each of the observations minus the expected return square uh, there is a separate presentation that i'll make just to show the equivalence of these two but i'm not going to pursue it any further on this in this presentation so let's take a look at two stocks, X and Y, with the following characteristics under the uh, three scenarios. We'll say the state of the economy, slowdown, normal, and growth. The probability we assign to each of these is 20%, 60%, and 20%. And then under the slowdown scenario, X would give us a, re a return of 3%, minus 3% rather, and Y would give us a return of 8%. In the normal case scenario, we'll say X will, we forecast X giving us a return of 9% and Y giving us a return of 6%. In the growth scenario, X would give us 15% and then Y would give us 5%. So how would we calculate the expected return of these stocks? It's just, again, the summation. So we would take 20%. The probability of the slowdown times the return of minus 3%, add 60% times the probability of 9% uh, times the return of 9%, and the probability of 20% under the growth scenario times its return. So we just calculate that out, we'd end up with 7.8%. Now for Y, we would be doing the same thing. We have the various probabilities of 20%, 60%, and 20%, and we'd be multiplying them by the eight, six, and 5% returns under the scenarios. And that would give us a result of 6.2% as the expected value or expected return. Now variance is taking the expected values that we have calculated here, the 7.8 and the 6.2, and applying them as well with the formulas. So we would have here, the probability, zero, the 20% is 0 0.2 times the observation minus 3% minus 7.8, which is the expected value, squaring it, doing the same with the 60% at 9. That's here, these numbers, 60 and 9. And here, the 20% with 15% as a return. Okay, and that gives us a, a, a variance of 0.003456. Taking the square root of that gives us the standard deviation, which is 0 0.0588 or 5.88%. Now doing the same with Y, we would end up with a variance of 0 0.000096 and a standard deviation brought as a percentage of 0 0.98. So that's how we would do it. Thank you very much.